Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And my guest today is the city clerk of Beverly, Lisa Kent. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, and, uh, and to, to uh, none of the surprise of our viewers, we are going to be talking about the upcoming November election. Uh, and we're going to be talking about registering for the election. We're going to be talking about uh, mail-in voting, in-person voting, deadlines, et, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to thank you, Lisa, for being my, my guest today. So now uh, the election is on November 3rd, uh, which is about five or six weeks away. We're sitting here. What's the date today? The 16th. Um, so now uh, the deadline uh, for registering for the election is when, Lisa? October 24th. October 24th. Up until and, 8 o'clock, yes. Right, and I, I, will, t I will show, um, uh, this is what I received in the mail just the other day, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers have seen this. And this is from the, the state of Massachusetts, and it talks about the ballot questions and so forth. And if you haven't already done so, there is a, um, a mail-in uh, registration form, which you can fill out and tear it off and mail it. And it even says here that October 24th is, is the deadline for, for that. Um, and uh, let's, let's talk about in-person voting, first of all. And uh, uh, that happens on November 3rd. And uh, you also have a period of uh, early voting in Massachusetts. Can you tell us when that is and, and how people uh, where can they, do they go to their normal polling place for that or is there a special polling place for early uh, in-person voting? So we do have um, two weeks of early voting, um, October 17th through October 30th. And we do it on the first floor of City Hall. Um, we did it in September and it was successful. You know, it's a little more challenging now with COVID and being safe. So we have a little bit of a different structure than we normally would, but um, it was, went very well. We had about a thousand early voters in September and, you know, we, we were going to stick with the same plan in the front door, out the back and only a couple of people voting at a time. And um, I think, you know, I think everybody enjoyed it. It was a good experience. And okay. now uh, can you vote on any day between the 17th or the 30th or just certain days? No, every day, um, but even the weekends. So Saturday and Sundays, they're going to be, we'll be open nine to two for voting. And then Monday through Friday, it'll be during our business hours, the 35 hours that we have City Hall hours. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 8.30 to 4.30, and Thursday, 8.30 to 7.30, and Friday, 8.30 to 1. And that's for the two weeks. Okay, so uh, this is at City Hall, and this is for in-person voting. Now, you don't need to have any kind of an excuse that you're going to be absent or any or COVID, anything like this. Yep. If, if you want to vote early, you can go in and vote early. And there'll be a, a, a voting booth. Will they, will they take off your, the way they do when I vote in my precinct? They'll have, the, they'll have the address files and you check it off. Is that what happens? Yeah, well, we have poll pads that we have. They're kind of like an iPad. And you just, we ask you your name and your address and we put it on the poll path. It prints out a little label. We put on the uh, election envelope. We give you your ballot and then you go to and you vote at the voting booth and then you drop your ballot in the ballot box and you're done. Okay. And this, is, this will be at City Hall from the 17th to the 30th. Um, and uh, it's, it's an early in-person voting, correct? Correct. Right. And for uh, the regular voting November 3rd, people will vote uh, at their usual precinct uh, polling place uh, as they normally do, correct? Correct. It, it looks a little bit different because we have to set it up a little different with the social distancing and, you know, things like that. But you go to wherever you've always voted, that's where you go. Um, all 12 precincts will be open. And, yep. um, you know, we'll have our workers there to help and guide you the, the new direction it kind of it goes because everybody's used to what we always have done. And so we had to change it up a little bit just to be safe. Now I've heard and, and read reports that uh, some states are looking for poll place workers. What's the situation in Beverly? Do you have, are you all staffed? Or are you still looking for volunteers? Um, we always are looking for volunteers. Our, 
you know, they, they get a stipend, a small stipend. Uh, we do have a great amount of workers that come back every year and help us out. We have a lot of new workers, a lot of young workers that have volunteered this year. So we're excited about that because getting the young people involved is a great thing. So right now we do have a waiting list because we also have to be careful of the numbers we put because of the COVID. We have to make sure that we're not crowded. Um, so we're, you know, we're thinking of different ways to um, use the people who really want to get involved. So we're very lucky. A lot of people have um, contacted us and we're pretty well staffed. We still welcome people to ask because we always have something that if the weather's bad, somebody can't make it or they get sick or for other reasons. So it's always, if you want to, you know, work the polls and help us learn the elections and all that, it's an interesting day. And we encourage the students even, you know, we've had good luck with students. They're involved in how our democracy works, right? Right. It's different. You know, people, it's, once they see it happening at the election, they, they're kind of like, wow, we didn't know this all went into it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, I imagine that there will be the uh, mask protocol, just the way a lot of stores now you walk in, they say if you don't have a mask. So masks will be mandatory at the polling places, I imagine. Correct. And we do offer those um, at the front of the voting place precinct. Um, we have gloves, we have masks, we have hand sanitizer, a whole station in case somebody doesn't have their own. Right, if they've forgotten it or whatever. Okay. Right. Uh, that, and we don't have the same pens. We changed all the pens, you know, so you have your pen, you either take it with you or you put it in a basket. So nobody's using the same pens. So it's a, you know, okay. safety. Okay, now let's, let's talk about um, voting by mail, which is, which is quite the topic these days uh, uh, throughout our political system. Now, uh, if you do vote by mail, let, let's, let's get one thing out of the way. Uh, the, the, um, your ballot must be postmarked by the end of November 3rd, which is election day, correct? Must be postmarked? Your, your ballot must be, yeah, we must be returned to us by eight o'clock on election night. But if you're requesting a ballot, the deadline is October 28th. Okay, let's talk, it. okay. So let, let's talk about that first. So if people have not, um, don't have a, uh, in a vote by mail ballot, they have until October 28th to do that. Uh, correct. We will say that Massachusetts is one of the states where uh, people should have automatically gotten a mailer with uh, uh, an application to vote by mail, which, which I did, and I voted in the primary using that. And I'm still uh, um, uh, uh, pending as far as voting in the national election. So this is a second opportunity then. And I believe that you are also sending out a mailer to that effect, are you not? Yeah, well, the state is sending out for anybody who didn't sign up for September or who didn't yeah. vote early in September, they're sending out, like my husband and my son got it because they went to the polls. So they got their, if they want to vote in November um, early, they got a card yesterday. So the cards are going to be sent out again. If you already sent your card in or already requested an absentee ballot, we ask that you don't send another card in because it just makes a okay. lot more extra work for yeah. our office. Right. Yeah. And so um, it must be, uh, now you say you must, re uh, uh, my understanding is that it has to be postmarked by the end of November 3rd, but it can be received by you up until the 6th? Correct, that. correct, correct. Okay. but the November election, yes. Because you said something about it has, you have to receive it by eight o'clock of that day, the mail-in ballot that... The, well, the, I was talking about the um, ballots at night, like for the election night. But okay, yeah, it can be, it can, we can be postmarked um, as long as it's postmarked and we can do it and receive it um, five days later. And that's because you, the, the postmark, uh, the, the post office could receive it, but then by the time they disseminate it and it gets to you, it could be a couple of days. So it has to be postmarked by the third and received by you on, on the, on the sixth. Yeah. Now um, the, the, uh, the, mail-in ballots can also be hand delivered, can they not? Because I know that for the, the primary, I voted in the little vestibule in the back of City Hall where there was a, tell us about that, uh, Lori. So we do have a um, drop-off box in the back hall of City Hall right now. And we also just ordered and we received a, a new one that we're hoping to put outside in the front of City Hall. Um, and it says the City of Beverly, it's red, white, and blue, and it says drop-off box. So it's very distinct. 
and we encourage people to drop off their ballots as well there. We just need to have it, we just got it yesterday, so we just need to have it set up outside um, once the ballots start, you know, coming back in. So, so that people don't have to wait, uh, they can just hand deliver it and not throw it in, not put it into a mailbox or take it to the post office, they can take it directly Correct. And we and prefer to do it early, you know, it, it helps. Of course, us. and yeah, in the city like Beverly, I think there, there's no two points in Beverly that in a car you can't get from one point to another in 10 to 15 minutes. It's not a big, big, huge city. So uh, I intend to do that my, myself, actually. Yeah. Now, um, one of the things that uh, I found very helpful, and th this, this article in the paper that appeared in the Salem News um, recently, mentions a website uh, called www.trackmyballotma.com. And I went on there and it just requires you to put in your, your name and address really, and, and the information back. In fact, let me see if I can um, get that up. Here it is. Can you see that? I can't. Uh, okay, our, our viewers should be able to see that. So this is what I, when I, when I, um, uh, went into the um, um, website, uh, track my ballot. Uh, so you can see that my, uh, I, I voted in the state primary. Uh, uh, that's when the ballot was received, it was accepted. And my national state and national is pending. And then this is my city uh, and state and your name here, Al Kent at beverlymass.gov is there as well. So. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of requests asking where their ballot is. Right now, you know, they're not even printed or they're getting printed and we have not received them. So it's a good thing for the, you know, Beverly voters to know we, that the city clerk's office hasn't received the ballots yet. We're waiting yeah. for the state to send them. Um, once they wrapped up the September election, they had to then print them because some of those people are on that ballot. And then they'll mail them to us probably the first week or so of October. And that's okay. when you should expect to get your ballots by the, by the second week. In, second week no. in October, uh, that's when we should receive yeah. uh, the ballots. And um, uh, if, if for some reason you don't get the ballot, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put some information up. But give us a number for City Hall or give us an email address for people who have, have some more questions. What, what would that be? Well, we encourage you, if you don't get your ballot by, say, October 20th, to call our office at 605-978-605-2325. Um, That's my number. Um, or my email is lkent at beverlyma.gov. And we'll, I'll be happy to help you look it up. And um, uh, now, uh, go over again City Hall hours. Now, City Hall uh, technically is not open for business now, or is it semi-open? Tell us about that. Yeah, it's semi-open. It started on Monday. Uh, okay. we, we have somebody at the front door, and they have people sign in. And we just have somebody, maybe one or two people in the first floor of City Hall doing business at either the clerk's office or the collector or treasurer's. And um, it's been going well this week. So I think the people are happy to come in and see us because it's been a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it's, we're just kind of easing into it, you know, and testing things out just to make sure everybody's safe. And uh, for the, uh, remind us again, when, when the early voting uh, starts, what will be the city hall hours for early voting? So early voting will be on October 17th, that's a Saturday. And so the both two Saturdays and two Sundays, it's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then during the week is the regular business hours from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, 8.30 to 4.30. And then on Thursdays is our long day, so that will be 8.30 to 7.30. And then Friday is 8.30 to 1. So all those hours, you can come right up until till the minute before and you know cast your vote. Now, um, let me uh, show you one thing. There, there's a, a mailer that a lot of people got um, from, this is from the United States Postal Service out of, uh, came out of Washington. Um, and uh, I've, I've seen some news reports that there's some controversy about some of the questions and or some of the bullets on here that aren't accurate for all states. Um, can you comment on that, uh, uh, Lisa? Um, 
I haven't seen that exact one, but I have heard about it. And I think the that all states have different rules. You know, we go by the Secretary of State of Massachusetts. So our okay. rules are different than say, you know, Pennsylvania or Texas or something. So for something to go out federally, it's really not accurate for each, uh, each state, you know? So as far as mailing out ballots, um, we always had to have a request in hand. Now the state has mailed out to everybody who is a registered voter in Beverly and you have that opportunity without excuse to just mail it in and ask for your ballot. In some states, you still, that, that didn't happen. You still have to request it. Okay. Now, uh, we, should, we should remind uh, our, our viewers that uh, it's, it's not legal to vote in person and by mail, correct? <laughs> Correct. And you know, this, I know that this has been the media, uh, no offense, the media or like people on TV saying that, you know, maybe you could vote twice. It's just, it, it's, you can't, I mean, you can try, but we're going to catch it. You know, we, yeah. we have to record, everything has to be recorded as to, we have to go by a beginning system to an end system and everything in between. And there's just no way we would not catch somebody voting twice. And, and you know, it was, a little glitchy um, in September where, you know, you could ask for an absentee ballot back even in March. And then they forgot that they requested one. So they would ask for another one in September, but we caught it. We knew yeah. that, you know, that you can't have two ballots going. And so for anybody worried about something like that, you can, we can, I can assure you that our team at the city clerk's office will catch it and will, will reject one of the ballots. Now, now is, it, is it a felony or is it a civil fine? What, what is the penalty if you deliberately vote? Um, uh, vote I believe it's a felony and you're purging yourself. I mean, it's against the law. Essentially, yeah, because you have, yeah. you've made a statement on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yes. And, you know, I honestly think, you know, you got to look at it too. Like some people don't remember that they did it, you know, so um, we take that in account, but you know, we do always check, check with the secretary of state and make sure that they're aware, but. Are, are you, you know. talking about the senior population? Yeah, 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 exactly. And did they I vote or did I not vote? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not making fun because I'm, I'm a senior myself, so. No, and I'm not making fun either, but I just wanted to point out that we're just not yeah. harsh with them. We'll, we'll just let them know, you know, you already sent your ballot, so we're gonna have to reject this one and you're, you're already voted, you're fine, you know. Let me ask you another question. Um, counting mail-in votes. Uh, I know some states have uh, different laws about when you can start counting those. I know some states, you can't start counting them until actually election day, and others, perhaps you can start counting them ahead of time so you, you don't have to wait till to do that all at once. What, what is it in Massachusetts? What's the situation? Well, there's two different things. Um, the Massachusetts, you can do a central tab, which is a kind of a new thing that's been the past few years where you can pick a day to publicly, like say go to the high school gym and have the public can watch and you can pre, before the election, put all your early voting um, and tabulate them in the machines. And for the bigger cities, it, it's important because there's so many. Um, for Beverly, you know, our staff, we've talked about it and we just feel like we can handle what we have on election day. So we haven't done the central tabbing. So what we have to do is just we, the registrars and ourselves, we bring the ballots down to the voting precincts wherever they belong. And then um, the workers put them through, check them off the list and put them through the machines that day. They start in the morning off of the day and by eight o'clock they have to be counted. And that's that. Now, um, we've, we've heard a lot of um, um, discussion and debate um, commentary throughout the news media last several months <clears throat> about um, the safety of uh, by mail voting and the potential for fraud, et cetera. Um, you, you alluded earlier that it's a, it's a very safe process. Do you want to make a comment on, on that? I just, I think it's a safe, I think Massachusetts is one of the safest states because our voting system isn't online. It's not, you know, it's just, it's an old system, but it works. And, you know, we have to be able to check off a list if somebody voted and once they're checked off, they can't vote again. So I think as far as fraud, you know, if somebody's going to go to the, 
stent of trying to vote for somebody else, like I've heard on the media, you know, we're going to, we're going to look into it with signatures and, you know, things like that. It's not as easy as, you know, somebody will say on the media that it's so, you know, it's, it's going to happen and it's easy and it's going to be a mess. We found nothing of the kind. We, you know, it went, it went very smoothly. We had um, 11,000 mail-in ballots, including absentees. And we, you know, we didn't have any problems. It was a, it was a lot of work, but it was, you know, no problems. Now, do you actually match for every uh, uh, mail-in vote, do you actually match the signature with the signature you have on file? We try to, yes. Yeah, some signatures are a little, you know, different because somebody registered to vote years ago, their signature may change. But we do try to match the signatures up and make sure that, you know, the signature is the same as it has been previous, either on the registration card or a license or past voting, you know. No, the idea that, that someone could get uh, a hold of a handful, you know, fistful of these mail-in votes and fill them out, that, that really, if they mailed them in, it, it, it wouldn't do anything. I mean, it would cause you some time, but you'd see immediately that, that the, this isn't a registered voter or the signature doesn't match and you would disregard that, right? So Correct. that sort of thing happening really, it really can't happen, can it? I don't think so, no. And, you know, we, we have a good team that, you know, Jane Murphy has been with us for 22 years. I've been in the same clerk's office business for 22 years. We kind of know what to look for, um, you know, and we just know if something's fishy, we, we look into it. And Matt, you know, the state, Galvin's off, he's, their office is wonderful to help us anytime we have help, need help or we're concerned about something like that, um, which doesn't really come across Beverly too much. We'll call them and they'll give us answers, you know? So I have every... I don't think, I just think people are more honest than what's being put out there, you know. Now, let, let's repeat again, if people have any kinds of, uh, of questions, they, they, they give us an email address or a phone number that people can, uh, can contact you or contact the city clerk's office. So they can call me if they want, 978-605-2325 or lkent at beverlyma.gov. Um, even if my phone rings and I'm not there for some reason, somebody else in the office can help as well. We're all trained to help you with anything you need. Now, in, in this discussion, I, is there anything that I have missed? Anything that you want to say to the voters that perhaps we didn't discuss, uh, Alisa? I just want to let them know that, you know, September was, we had a good amount for a state primary that the highest probably it was, I think it was um, 40% were at the polls and over 50% mail-in voters. So I feel like that those numbers are going to go up because this is a big election and people are interested. So just have patience, you know, if you have to wait in line, just remember it's still a pandemic. Um, we're doing our best to move you along, but we also mainly want to keep you safe. We want to make sure you vote, but we want to make sure you're safe. And so just please be patient. And if you have any questions or any problems, you can call me anytime during the election day or during the process of early voting. I'll be around, um, the staff will be around. So don't ever think that, you know, you can't vote. You're always gonna be able to vote and, you know, you just might have to wait in line for a little bit or, you know, be patient because okay. it's gonna be a big, big turnout, I believe. Very good. And so uh, Lisa Kent, uh, the city Clerk of Beverly, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I would like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.